Put a one in the comment section if you're starting to understand that this is true. Put a one in the comment section if this is starting to make sense to you. Our current testing strategy is all wrong. We've been doing it wrong this whole fucking time, right? What have they been doing? They've been telling you, um, go get a test if you start having symptoms, if you feel bad. So then there comes to be this real long line. Yes, who's waiting on long line? Long lines? Yes, yes, Lisa, yes. And so what happens is you end up only testing when you feel sick. Am I right? <clears throat> Everybody's agreeing. Jesus freak. If Jesus freak agrees, then I know I'm onto something. Our testing strategy is all wrong. So why is it all wrong? A couple things. I, I'm sorry, it's cold here. And I started my fireplace. And I've been, oh, I, I'm allergic, I think, to this little red oak. A little itchy. So apologize about that. All right, so what happens? <clears throat> We've been telling people, to, uh, we, they've been telling us to test. My, I just noticed my face is so puffy from all this fire, fireplace smoke. Man, sorry about that. All right, start over. That's vodka. <clears throat> just kidding, it's water. <laughs> just kidding, it's vodka. So um, from day one, they've been telling us to test whenever you feel sick, right? When you have symptoms. So you see all the pictures on the news of big parking lots, stadium lots, long car, car lines, multiple brr, 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 different ways for people to go in the car, people out there testing you, you know, in their PPEs and stuff, right? whenever they started feeling bad or two, when they would have been exposed or they were nervous or something like that. So what happened? There causes this huge backup. Now, why is this testing strategy not effective? I know you guys know because you watch me, you're smart, right? We know that the incubation period of this test of this virus can be up to 14, 15 days. The average incubation period for most viruses is about two to three days. Influenza, the seasonal flu, you are most contagious right before you have symptoms and when you have symptoms. That's not the case with COVID, with coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2. That's not the case, all right? There's a up to a 14, 15-day incubation period. The average is five to seven days, five to seven days, but it can be 14, 15 days. And that five to seven day incubation period, you're really contagious. You're contagious two to three days before having symptoms. Before having symptoms. But I feel fine. I don't understand why I can't go to the party. That's what asymptomatic means. So it's always an uphill battle. One of the things, <laughs> I can't believe I'm about to say this, but one of the things I do agree with President Trump, he's right. This is a fucking invisible enemy. He said it right. We can't see it. Your date, your tender date, Uncle Billy. She looks clean. She doesn't have symptoms. She feels all right. That's what asymptomatic means. You have no symptoms. Even with me, these are allergies. For my fireplace, right? So you can look at Dr. V and says, he has a runny nose. His eyes are a little puffy. Maybe he has maybe he has coronavirus. That's symptoms. See that? I'm symptoms. Well, I'm gonna test myself on this video with a rapid test so you can see. But this I know is because my fireplace is going. Okay? It happens every time I burn a fire. So um, but two to three days, you're highly contagious without symptoms. Two or three day window where you do not have symptoms. No symptoms. You look normal. You look fine. She looks clean. Uncle Billy says she looks clean. Um, and bam, chlamydia. <laughs> I mean, bam, coronavirus. That's what that's what I meant to say. All right. So two to three days, and then when you're highly, when you are really sick, you're also contagious. And then as you start to get better, your contagion goes down. Does that make sense? So Trump's right. It is an invisible enemy. 
And as much as I don't like it, it is the coronavirus. It is the China virus. It's so fucking ugly the way he says it. Technically, he should call it the Wuhan. The Wuhan virus, I guess. I don't know. We call it the UK variant. We call it the South African uh, variant. Now there might be a Japanese variant. Who knows about this new Japanese variant? We can say Japanese variant, but we can't say China virus. I don't like it, but that's just the way it is, okay? Technically, the UK variant is B117. Who the fuck can remember B117? <laughs> Right? So our current testing strategy is all wrong. Now, who remembers when they told you at the beginning, they said, if you feel symptoms, if you bad, feel bad, go get tested. So long lines, yes? And then they said, you need two negative tests before you can go back to work. Who remembers that? You need two negative tests. And then suddenly, a month later, they're like, nah, just quarantine. Just isolate for 14 days. That has since come down to seven days because people could not. And this current environment, economic environment, they can't stay away from work for 14 days. They'll lose their jobs. They don't make any money. So they cut that down to seven days. But who remembers in the early days they told you you had to have two negative tests before you could go back to work? What happened there? What happened there was this. Don't have enough tests. And they realize that you could also test positive for a long time. Doesn't mean you're shedding virus. So they just said, hey, on average, you know, we know you're contagious and the contagion goes down. 14 days, you should be out of that window of most infectious. But you can still be infectious. You can still be shedding virus. This is statistics, man. I'm just telling you. Don't get angry at Dr. V. I'm just telling you the facts, okay? So now they backed it down to seven days. Is that the right thing to do? You're still pretty contagious at that point. Some people are still having pretty serious symptoms. Dr. Vaughn would tell you, you need to not have symptoms. You need to not be coughing, since we know it's mostly respiratory virus. Runny nose, coughing, loss of smell. You're still contagious by Dr. V standards. You might be tired. You might have a little brain fog. It's been 21 days. You're probably good to go. You probably have dead virus inside of you. Dr. Vong, that sounds scary. How do we figure out if we are shedding positive virus, live virus? No good way. You actually have to culture it, which requires one of those special bio labs in Wuhan. <laughs> Fucking ironic, isn't it? <laughs> you have to have a lab that can culture live virus to know for sure, definitively which not just Wuhan, but that was just an example, right? Okay, so let's talk about tests, all right? I drew, <laughs> I drew this chart for you guys. I need a break on my whiteboard. All right, so let me scoot over. So let's talk about tests, all right? The one that you guys are doing the most of is the nasal slash oral PCR. Yes. That's the, that is when they tell you go get tested and you see people in line in the cars, all those pictures, videos of the cars. Most of that is this nasal PCR test. That's the one they shove you way up your nose and that shit needs to go up in here and they need to jiggle that shit around. They need to break through your fucking boogers and snot. They need to get your nose running. Did you know that? Now comment. If you had a nasal test and the little the little lady or the little assistant just put it up there and put it up there and she was done. Not a good test. We'll talk about why that's important. They need to shove it, break through the snot barrier, get your get your nose running, and then collect that sample. That's the best way to do it. Okay. Um, then they have to send it to a lab. And so now you have is the lab on site? Is the lab down the street? Is the lab in the same city? Or do they have to send it to another city to do the lab? So it could take a day to send it, a day to process it, a day to get back your results. Now, with more people getting tests, what's happening? What's your turnaround time? 
If you've had a nasal, one of these nasal drive up tests recently, how long did it get take you to get your results back? Remember back in June when it was taking 10 days? Well, freaking, I'm going to tell you, any test that's more than two days is useless. And you really need to have a test results back the same day. Wouldn't you agree? How long did it take you? Looney took, took them seven days. Anita, two to four days. All right. How long did it take you? 15 minutes is not one of these PCR tests. Good. Three to five days. Good. Seven days turnaround for LA, for California. See, that's right. Backlog. That's the problem. Okay. Same day is good. But here's the here's what you're seeing. Three days, four days, four days for Ryan. See, here it comes. 10 days for Latanya, nine days in Virginia, 10 days, 10 days. All right. So not good. Let's talk about that. All right. The next test we're going to talk about is the antigen test. Okay, antigen test. These can be nasal or the saliva. You see these nasal or saliva, the spit test. They call them spit tests. Uh, okay, those are the spit test or the nasal. You can do nasal too. Antigen, okay. And then there is the antibody tests. So there's the antibody test. That's the finger prick test. Those are my kits. That's what I have. I also have a nasal antigen box. So I have an antigen rapid test too. I'm still freaking testing it out. I'm messing with it. Okay. So next question, what do these tests for? All right, here comes the quiz. So you have to think, okay? You have to think here. What is the nasal PCR test looking for? What is it looking for, all right? So it's looking for genomic sequence. It's looking for the genomic genome. So that means what? DNA slash RNA. That's what these PCR tests are designed to do. DNA, RNA. All right. Now let's see who gets this right. When it comes to coronavirus, what we're talking about here, if you get one of these nasal drive up PCR tests, which one is it checking for? DNA or RNA? Who knows the answer? All right. You better say fucking RNA. Okay. That's what it's checking for. RNA, not COVID, wrong. Yes, COVID, but DNA or RNA? There you go. Yes, RNA. See, you guys are much smarter than the average Trump voter. Awesome. Awesome. He said he's not political. Look at him bashing us. Well, you got to see how the man behaves, man. How does the candidate behave? So when it comes to coronavirus... SARS-CoV-2, it's an RNA virus. So it's actually trying to pick up RNA. Does that make sense? And that's why you have to send it to a lab. And they have to run special assays and stuff on it. Okay. Now an antigen test. Proteins. I hear some squeaking like some mice. Seriously, I think they're coming in from the rain. All right. So what are protein antigens looking for? These are looking for proteins. Okay. All right. So we are always talking about that spike protein. Now, to be honest, I don't know exactly which
SARS-CoV-2. I have a storm coming through here through Houston, so I'm sorry if it's it's um, if it's like busting up. All right. Okay. So antibody test. That's easy. It's checking for antibodies. I did the last test, last test, last video. I talked about the vaccines and how you take a vaccine in this lipid bilayer and it, it induces an immune response that creates proliferation of your B, your B cells which makes memory B cells, plasma cells, which makes these antibodies, okay? So an antibody test checks if you have antibodies, right? That's what we're looking for here, antibodies. Now, um, pluses and minuses. Is this helpful? Pluses and minuses. Pluses for the nasal PCR. It's very sensitive. No, Uncle Billy, not like your condoms. <laughs> right? Sensitive means it picks it up at low levels. So this PCR test. Detection. But what's a negative? Problem is, you have a lot of false negatives and time. You get false negatives. I wanna talk about that real quick. What are false negatives? Who knows? It's when you take a test, the test comes back negative, but you actually have coronavirus, the test just didn't pick it up. That's called a false negative. So even though this test is most likely to pick it up early, it also has false negatives. I swear to God, I, I hear like a little guinea pig or something squeaking right behind me. I know we have little mice. Oh, Houston. Okay. So... False negatives. Why can you have false negative? The most likely reason is when they take that swab and they shove it up your nose, they miss it. Or when they take it into the back of your throat, let me see, way back here, they get the wrong tonsil or they don't hit the right spot. So you can miss it, even though the virus is inside of you, they miss it. That's number one. Number two, um, There could be a lab error in terms of reagents, timing, testing, but usually it's going to be technique, okay? Or they just picked it up too early, or you went and tested too early. Now, the next negative is it takes time. You have to send it to a lab, and the more cases you have, which is what we're seeing right now, the longer it takes to have a turnaround time. In which case, if it's taking you four or five days to get a turnaround time, what's the point of the test? Okay, which goes back to what I said earlier in an early video, how to protect yourself from coronavirus. You have to assume everybody has coronavirus. You have to assume that if you have runny nose, cough, especially if you lose sense of smell, it's coronavirus. And I don't care what test, even if you have a negative test, it's coronavirus right now because it's horses. They're not zebras, they're horses, they're out there, okay? Nasal, next test, nasal or saliva antigen, okay? Oh, another, another negative to, um, this, to this nasal PCR There's no rapid test, but now you know why. I mean, it requires high level of uh, sophistication 
to be able to pick up the DNA or RNA of a tiny virus. Does that make sense? So they don't have assays available to pick up the actual DNA. So there's, to my knowledge, there's no rapid PCR test. Okay. All right. Antigens. Okay. What are um, some positives? That's important because you want 10 to 15 minute results. Some of you guys who are going through your drive-thrus, now they're starting to offer you some nasal antigen rapid tests, 10, 15 minute results because they, they know. Problem is not very accurate. That's a negative. It's not very accurate. But even being 70% accurate, which is what the PCR is, um, it's better than nothing. And those saliva spit tests are horrible. That's what Costco is selling you, right? They're about 60% accurate, the spit tests. That's the one the NBA used. They formed that because they're thinking, well, at least if you're 60% accurate, it's better than a coin toss. Knowing is better than not knowing. And if you test them enough, then you're going to catch it. So that's the strategy. It's like, you, if you test them frequently, all right, you'll get this. All right. If you test enough, like these NBA basketball players, they were getting tested every day with a test that's only 50 to 60% accurate. But if you test them every single day, it's just a matter of time when those probabilities catch a positive test. Does that make sense? All right. So... One of the things I said early on is that we have totally fucked up the testing. We were doing this one-time testing, et cetera. It's just not, you know, only come get a test if you feel bad. No, you should be doing what the NBA is doing, which is testing regularly. That's what I do. I test myself every seven to 10 days, 10 to 14 days. Um, I tested myself a week ago. I'm going to test myself again today uh, on this video. Um, it's available on rapid test. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So the antibodies. Let's see, let me just say it's less sensitive. So it's less sensitive for early detection. The PCR is the best for early detection. The middle is our antigen rapid test. And this antibody test, rapid, it's available in a rapid test. That's what I have. That's what's here. So it's easy to do. That's super important. Now, it's not quite as easy as spitting into a cup. <laughs> but even that one, you got to send in. The spit test one, you got to send into a lab. Antibody test, you can do it at home. That's what I do. Finger prick, put it on a cassette. I'll, I'll test myself here in a few minutes. All right. Negative is um, it's least sensitive. It will pick up active infection, but it's least sensitive. But it will pick up active infection. All right. Some people are like, you can't use it to pick up active infection. Yes, you can. One time is not the best strategy. But if you're like the NBA basketball players and you test yourself regularly, like what I do, you can use it for active infection. Now, here's another positive for it. It's very accurate. It is the most accurate. Of all of these three tests, it's the most accurate for COVID. Why? because that means your body has been exposed to COVID, to coronavirus, to SARS-CoV-2. Your body has been exposed to SARS-CoV-2 and has produced these antibodies, right? From, from, from the spike protein there. And this test will pick it up. 
So it is very accurate. It is the most accurate. Now, what are we doing wrong? People go, oh, I feel bad. I'm going to go get an Turnaround time got up to 10 days. It was bad, right? Then they started trying to say, hey, we need um, a point of treatment test. So when you go see your doctor, it's just kind of like the influenza or the strep test. They, they do a strep test on you. It comes back positive and negative, right? Um, and so they started offering those. But if you use the antibodies... They're very accurate because you you get it. You might just not, it's not as sensitive. But if it's going to take four or five days to get a result back from this PCR, by that point, you should have formed antibodies. Does that make sense? Forming antibodies takes about five to seven days. So if it's going to take five days to get the results back, you might as well just stay at home, prick your finger, and I always say, you know, if you think you might have it, you got to test yourself twice at least, minimum. One for the baseline, one five to seven days later to see if, in case you missed this incubation period. Now, if I had to guess, what I think would work really, really well, and this is what I'm looking at doing, is combining an antigen test with an antibody test. So I got this antigen, this, this is a rapid antigen test. You do it at home. You put it on a cassette. You don't send it to a lab, right? Awesome, right? You have this antigen test. So it's going to pick up. <clears throat> it's more sensitive for picking up active infection. Let's say you feel bad. Dr. Vong, I've been feeling bad for three or four days. All right. First thing I would do is do a rapid antigen test at home. And then if that's negative, if it's positive, you're done. If it's positive, you got it. If it's negative... I would repeat it with an antibody test in another four to five days. Whole time, it doesn't matter. You can, you need to be isolating anyway. Dr. Vong, what's, you know, you know, why should we take the test if they don't pick up? No, you, no, that's not, that's not the right attitude. You need to know, but the whole time you should still be isolating, not quarantining. Quarantining means you can go to the grocery store, do your essentials, et cetera. Isolating means what? Isolating means you stay in a bedroom and they bring you your food because you got to stay away from everybody because you think you're positive. So right now we have cases that are so high that if you start to feel bad, you need to isolate. But Dr. Vong, you said you had a stuffy nose, a little mild cough. How do you know? Well, I'm a doctor. I know it's from my fireplace because I was fine yesterday. Well, I could still have it. So that's why I test myself every 10 days. Right. So this will be seven days. Um, you got to do this to get you through the whole time. Now, listen. Remember what I said? Well, Dr. Vong, how do I know when I am I can I'm safe to go out of the house? CDC says seven days. You quarantine for seven days, isolate for seven days. You're good. They cut that back from 14 days, hoping more people would quarantine. I keep saying quarantine, but I mean isolate because they're hoping that. At least if you if you isolate for seven days, that's better than nothing. That's their logic. I don't agree with it, but it's okay. There's no way to know if you're shedding virus. Well, Dr. Vaughn, how did they let Dr. Uh, how did they let President Trump out of the hospital so soon? One, he probably demanded it. But two, they had they probably had access to live culturing. So they probably cultured him. If I had to guess, they might not have. They might have let him say they might have said, Okay, well, you're you're roughly 10 days since your first onset or exposure, which is not quite right, but they let him out. And you can't go back and change the past. Um, 